Okay, so um, good evening, ladies. Thank you for joining the call. For those that don't know me, I'm Zoe and I'm a fellow menopause sufferer. Um, and I've been delivering these um, menopause Monday calls monthly ongoing. I think we're probably on about our sixth or seventh one now. I've lost count. Um, so um, I'll give you a bit of um, background on my story a bit later. Um, but you know, just really, um, you know, there's obviously a lot of um, a lot of symptoms associated with menopause. Um, diet, obviously, is um, quite a key one, um, and looking after your gut health, um, especially sort of during the menopause. Um, so I'm going to go. I'm going to hand you over to Julie. Um, Julie is a qualified nutritionist that we've sort of been networking together over the recent months and she's kindly agreed to come on and um, give us her top tip so over to you Julie. Lovely to see you all and thank you for taking the time out on such a beautiful evening to come and join us but it is important um, you know we'd, we'd, like Zoe we're would, would very much very passionate about trying to get the information out to women um, particularly a lot of the things that are in the media and on tv are very much around hrt which i'm not anti-hrt but there are lots of things you can do naturally um, that potentially you wouldn't need hrt so whilst hrt has got its place and i know there's some people that absolutely can't cope without it my advice is try all the natural things first because that in itself might fix things and then if it's still not working then take the HRT. A little bit of background on me, I am also, I'm actually post-menopause now but actually went through the most horrendous experience of menopause and through my studies managed to naturally manage all of my symptoms. I'll probably say my worst symptoms that still a little bit problematic are hot flushes and night sweats and this weather does nothing to help that so I'm dreading sleep going to bed tonight <laughs> cotton sheets in the freezer and cold hot water bottle and cold flannel already <laughs> so yeah I, I, I am coming from a place of experience is what I'm trying to say and have managed to successfully manage all my symptoms naturally without the need for HRT which wasn't really an option for me because of um, the risks in my family history. So although I was offered it, I chose not to go down that route, but just wanted to let you know that there is you know, a lot you can do and there is hope out there. So it is a bit of a whistle stop tour tonight because I am conscious of time. So just a little bit of background as to what's actually happening in the body. So we talk about menopause as being puberty in reverse because basically in puberty you're preparing your body's preparing for your reproductive years so the estrogen levels are increasing your progesterone levels are increasing so those are the main sex hormones we do also have levels of testosterone the same as men and men also have levels of estrogen just different much different levels and obviously they perform different functions in men so when you're in puberty, you'll notice that your shape changes. So you'll develop breasts, you start to get hips, you get a waist. And that is your, the estrogen is basically dictating to the body where to, where to deposit the fat and giving you the shape for bearing a child. So in menopause, starting sort of perimenopause, which is the preceding time, to menopause which can start from any age from early 40s into early 50s some people don't start that transition till much later so it's very much an individual journey it can at its worst take 10 to 15 years at its quickest it can take something like three to five years so again it's very individual as to how everybody goes through that transition and we talk about going through that transition, but we never actually get to the end of menopause. Once you're post-menopause, you're always in menopause. So for the last third of your life, you will be in menopause. There's no end to it that, you know, you get through it and then everything goes back to normal. That, that is how it stays. So one of the things that happens is because we're losing that protective effect of estrogen, estrogen is a very anti-inflammatory hormone. 
And so uh, risk of osteoporosis increases, uh, cardiovascular risk increases. We tend to get more muscle aches and joint pains. Um, we get the vasomotor symptoms, so the hot flushes, night sweats. Uh, we can get cognitive uh, symptoms such as brain fog, anxiety, depression are all quite common, but they're more sort of perimenopausal symptoms. And that is because there's such drastic fluctuations going on in the hormones whilst they're sort of balancing out that the brain kind of has to recalibrate itself and will find a, a level that it's happy with. And so those sort of cognitive symptoms are very much temporary or they should be. So if you're on this call and you're post-menopause and you're still having pretty bad like brain fog and anxiety and depression, then it may not be menopausal symptoms. It could well be something else. So I would suggest you go and speak to your GP about that. Um, the other thing is the collagen stores start to deplete and muscle tone starts to reduce. So weight gain is quite an issue for, for ladies entering this transition because the basal metabolic rate will naturally reduce with age. The muscle tone's reducing and muscle is more metabolically active than fat. So the, we actually need lesser amount of calories. The estrogen drop actually causes us to become more insulin resistant. So if you are struggling with weight gain, then a lower carbohydrate diet is beneficial in menopause because we become less tolerant of carbohydrates because we become more insulin resistant. So um, what tends to work for weight management is low carb, higher protein, and then moderate fats. And I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit more about fats um, and the right types of fats, because if, if you're all my kind of age, we grew up in the eighties where fat got a really bad press and fat was the bad guy and don't touch it with a barge pole and go low fat or fat free. And it's actually one of the worst things that you can do for hormone health. So we'll start with the fats because I know that ties in nicely with Zoe's Omega supplements, which are Omega 3, 6, 7 and 9, all in, all in combination. And what, what the omega fats are, are, are essential fats. And they're called essential fats because the body doesn't make them for itself. So the only way that we can get those fats is through diet. So omega-3s are generally the more anti-inflammatory type of fat. So they will help when the estrogen levels are dropping and you're losing that anti-inflammatory effect of the estrogen the omega-3s will help to rebalance the, any inflammation in the body. The omega-6 are generally more pro-inflammatory, but as long as your omega-6 to 3 ratio is well balanced, and we talk about it being something like a 2 to 1 or 3 to 1 ratio, so 3 omega-6 uh, yeah, three omega six to 1 omega-3 ratio, whereas in the Western diet, because we've, it's very high in animal proteins and processed foods, they're the more pro-inflammatory and our omega six to three ratio can be something like 16 to one. So if you look at your diet and you've got lots of inflammatory omega sixes in there, um, so that's things like meat, dairy, um, some of the starchy, uh, no, not vegetables. Um, yeah, so mainly meat and dairy are more pro-inflammatory. Um, then if you can sort of get a better balance on that, so replacing some of your meat intake by some oily fish, which is the best source of omega-3s. So your oily fish are salmon, mackerel, anchovies, herring and sardines. Tuna isn't an oily fish, but it's okay in, in terms of an omega-3 balance if you eat tuna. But there's a reason why they tell pregnant women not to eat tuna because it's got very high mercury content. So if it's not good for pregnant women, in my opinion, it's not that good for any of us. So if you do eat a lot of tuna, then try and reduce that down and have some of the other types of fish. Um, omega sevens are things like the sea book thorn oil, which I believe is in Zoe's supplement. And omega nine is things like olive oil. So really nice balance of those fats are really good because what, what your body needs those essential fats for is to maintain the health of your cell membranes. 
So we're made up of trillions of cells. That, that's basically what we are. And every cell has a membrane around it. And what you want is that membrane to be nice and fluid because the cells have to take in nutrients to perform the functions within the cell. They have to pass nutrients between cell to cell. And also on the outside of the cell is a hormone receptor. So if you think of that like a docking station, that when you produce a hormone, that has a job to perform. All it is is a chemical messenger that the brain's saying, I need some estrogen to get the ovary to produce the egg and then release the egg. Then that's sort of sending a message around the body, locking into any um, receptor that's got an estrogen, uh, any cell that's got an estrogen receptor on it, performing the job, and then it releases. And hormones are just proteins. So they then get detoxified. Once they've performed the job they're there to do, they get detoxified through the liver. So if your cell membranes are not fluid enough or, or not sort of pliable, and it, if you've got a diet in another type of fat called trans fats, so these are your synthetic types of fats. So any baked goods, processed goods, fried goods, crisps, um, sunflower oil, vegetable oils, um, spreadable butters are one of the worst sources of trans fats because in order so saturated fats should be solid at room temperature so in order to make the fat spreadable they chemically alter the structure of the fat and those types of fats are the fats that the body doesn't want can't process can't use so it'll just store them as fat but worse than that they make your cell membranes really rigid so if you think about the membrane being like a piece of cling film or like a Tupperware box, then the trans fats are going to make your cell membrane like a Tupperware box. And the half life of a trans fat. So we talk about half life in terms of medications. So, for instance, if you were to take some paracetamol, you, you're allowed to take them every four hours. And the reason you can take them every four hours is because at that four hour point, that's where the half life is. So basically the dose is starting to wear off. So in terms of trans fats half life, so how long they'll stay in your body as that trans fat, it's four to six months to actually eliminate those fats mm. from your body. Whereas your essential fats, if you're eating things like your oily fish, avocados, nuts, seeds, chia seeds, um, hemp seeds, the body goes, oh, I really want some of those because it can do something with them. It can use them. And so although some of those foods, particularly avocados, are higher in calories, and that's where we, when we're on calorie counting diets, we look at the calorie content of something and go, I can't eat that because it's too high in calories. You need to try and come away from thinking about calorie contents of foods and more about how nutritious is that food. So for instance, just for example, 100 calories could be a handful of nuts or it could be a Kit Kat bar, which one of those is more nutritious. So try and think of foods in terms of nutrition rather than calories and what, what it's actually going to do for your body. Um, anything I've missed on the trans fats? So, yeah, the only other thing is we talked about the cell receptors. So if your cell membrane is really rigid, then potentially with a hormone imbalance you're either not producing enough hormones or the hormones aren't locking into the receptor properly so you could potentially be, have a, a normal level of hormones but if your cell membrane is really rigid and the cell receptors sitting on the outside of that and maybe not sitting correctly then when that hormone comes to dock into that cell receptor it might not sit right, it might not connect. And so that signal then gets distorted. So with hormone imbalances, it can be either that you're not actually producing that same level of hormones, or it could be your cell membranes and your cell receptors that aren't working properly. And as a nutritional therapist, it's very much getting to the root cause of what's driving that hormone imbalance. And, and that's, that's how we would work. Um, there was something else I wanted to say on that. Uh, hormones yet so going back to what I said about hormones being proteins so one of the other things that can create an imbalance in hormones is if you haven't got enough good sources of protein in your diet so if you're plant-based 
you need to be making sure that you're getting sufficient levels of plant proteins but not all plant-based foods will contain the nine essential amino acids that you need whereas if you eat meat then animal products do actually contain all of the nine essential amino acids that the body needs and you need ideally to be getting a good source of protein in with every single meal because if you if you've got too low levels of protein then potentially you've not got enough in your body Pro protein is the building block of life so the body uses it for everything and it will be the last source of fuel that the body will use so you'll burn off carbohydrates as your first source of fuel because they're basically just sugars so it's much easier for the body to break that down into energy your second source of fuel will be fats and that but it needs to be the right types of fats and then your third and very last source of um, energy would be protein. So the body will conserve protein and needs protein for lots of bodily functions on a daily basis. So if it hasn't got enough to do some of the essential functions that it needs it for, then what's going to happen is hormone production will potentially be lower. And if you're going through this transition where your hormone levels are dropping anyway, then Sometimes just by up in protein, that can actually help to just assist with any hormone imbalances if it's the production of the hormones that's the issue rather than the cells and the receptors that, that's the problem. Um, so if you are sort of getting low, if we think, you know, the, the hormone production is okay, it's just the fact that you're going through this transition and levels are dropping, there are certain foods that you can incorporate into the diet which have what's called an estrogenic effect so you might have heard of phytoestrogens um, so their foods um, mainly vegetables green leafy vegetables so broccoli is one of the best sources and broccoli sprouts if you're into sprouting your own seeds are like what, what clusters of superfoods so they're really high in phytoestrogens um, things like cauliflower so it's the brassica vegetables so uh, kale broccoli cauliflower sprouts um, spinach and then you've got things like um, flax seeds which are really high in lignans but they've also they convert to phytoestrogens in in the body so if you've got a hormone imbalance and you've got too much estrogen so in in some cases where you get estrogen driven cancers like uh, breast cancer or cervical cancer then you're producing too much of the wrong type of estrogen, then phytoestrogens can actually block those hormone receptors and fool the body into thinking it's got enough, so it reduces the production. But if you're not producing enough, then equally it has that same effect of, then it, it can block the estrogen receptors and fool the body into thinking, I've got enough estrogen. So they're a really good way of, of helping to balance hormones. And I think that's mainly it around around foods. And I'm conscious of time, Zoe. So do you want me to hand back over to you? Oh, do you know what? That's yeah, wonderful. Thank you so much. That was really interesting. Um, and you. we'll we'll have a bit of a questions and answer thing at the end as well. Sure. Yes. Um, because I'm sure there'll be people wanting to ask you questions. Um, no problem. So I just, um, I mean, I just wanted to sort of give you a bit of background on my journey, because I know you mentioned like the Amigas, you know, because I was suffering myself with all the symptoms, the night sweats, the hot flushes, the aches, the brain fog, the moods. Um, and I wasn't offered HRT. I was told it was in short supply. And I was always a bit dubious about trying it anyway, because my mum never got on very well with it. Um, and I stumbled across these products. and. Um, you know I've had such improvements I think for me I mean all of those the night sweats the hot flushes um, the aches and pains have been the, the most miracle uh, in my life um, because I was seeing a sports therapist regularly for my neck pain um, I was taking an awful lot of um, paracetamol and ibuprofen when it was really bad and it was really bad a lot um, so you know I've had tremendous um, improvements since I've been adding um, our vegan amigas which include all five which is the three five six seven and nine as Julie mentioned um, and um, 
you know, we have, we've actually got a range of products that I take them all. And actually a lot of our products are, they're all plant-based. And you mentioned the importance of protein. I take our protein shakes as well. Um, and um, we have a product stories group where, um, you know, we invite people in there to take a look at how the products have sort of helped people with their health goals. And there's a lot in there on menopause, certainly, you know, ones that I sort of put in there in recent times. Um, but also um, we there's Claire's um, kindly agreed to come on the call today. Now, Claire actually came on to one of my calls. I think it must have been a couple of months ago. She was invited by Jackie. Now, Jackie's the lady that introduced me to these wonderful yeah. products. And um, so Jackie invited Claire onto the call. Claire soon after ordered the products and she's had amazing results. So Claire, if you wouldn't mind telling us how you were feeling before and what's happened and how you're feeling now since you got on our products. Yeah, well, before I was feeling awful. Um, I was suffering, same as what you've been saying, the night sweats, the day sweats, the hot flushes, the brain fog, the pain in my joints when I was in bed at night were just unbelievable. Um, I was actually complaining to my husband and saying that, oh, we need a new mattress. You know, I'm in so much pain. It's got to be the mattress. I never thought for a second that it was anything to do with the menopause. Um, just a, a, a quick background. I had um, a hysterectomy at 43 um, and they took everything out. So they took my ovaries out as well. So I literally, I didn't have perimenopause. I was... <laughs> put under general anaesthetic, woke up a few hours later and I was straight into surgical menopause, they, they called it. Um, HRT doesn't suit me, although I do have to take it every other day um, because my um, grandmother had osteoporosis, so they said I needed to take HRT. But I can't take it daily because it doesn't suit me, so I have to take it every other day because it, it gives me horrendous migraines. Since seeing Jackie's post on Facebook and going on to your Zoom call, three days later, I started taking the Amigas and within two weeks, honest truth, two weeks, I was seeing so many benefits from them. I was sceptical. I will be, you know, truthful because when you see these things, and oh, no, they can't work. They do. You know, now I have had no night sweats in the last month not a single one, even in this heat. Um, day sweats I'm not getting. Still getting the odd hot flush during the day, um, but no night sweats, no aches and pains. I can turn over in bed without actually, you know, physically almost crying out from pain. Um, they're just brilliant. <laughs> they have made so much difference to me. I can't tell you, honestly. I'm so, you know, I'm happy in my moods, everything. It's, I'm a different person. I, I feel a different person. I did, um, I've got my own cake business and I did my first uh, market stall last weekend. Now, normally that's the type of thing, anything new, I get stressed, anxiety, awful. Oh, I was as calm as a cucumber. <laughs> even, even my husband commented how calm and, and relaxed I was, not stressed at all. Wow. So, yeah, massive change for me. Massive. Well, oh, that's brilliant. I'm so happy for you that, um, you know, that they've helped you too. It's, um, yeah, yeah huge. It's, it's brilliant. It sounds like it's been a bit of a life changer for you as well. Mm. You know, with your Absolutely. business. And, yeah, that's great. Well, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, I mean, I just wanted to touch upon the difference in our Amigas in comparison to those on the market, because, you know, um, there's a lot of Amiga um, products out there. So, I mean, the difference with ours, obviously they are vegan um, and they include all five Amigas. So the three, five, six, seven and nine, as I mentioned, um, and they're not fishy either. So um, we don't uh, go to the fish. We go to the, the algae that the fish feed on. So it's the source from the fish. Um, and also our capsules are all bioavailable, which means that the body recognises this. They're not a synthetic product. Um, it's a whole food. So it goes straight into your bloodstream. It gets stored, which is why sometimes um, people can um, take a bit longer 
um, to notice improvements. Obviously, Claire was quite quick, she was a couple of weeks. Um, I personally was four weeks, but some of my ladies can be sort of three to four months. So um, they also contain EPA and DHA, which contribute to the maintenance of um, brain, eye and heart health. And again, we've seen a lot of great testimonials around sort of, you know, the mood, anxiety, depression. Um, some people have even come off their antidepressants, which a lot of people get prescribed when they're in menopause. Doctors just bung you antidepressants because they don't know what else to do with you. Um, and also, um, Claire also takes our premium capsules, which is our fruit, veg and berry capsules. So again, going back to gut health, these are the equivalent of 30 varieties of fruit, veg and berries. So it's really key to you know, to be looking after our, our gut health. Um, so obviously that's, um, you know, that's really important. Um, so, um, yeah, so just before we go into a questions and answers um, situation, I just wanted to mention that, you know, I've been on these products myself for a couple of years. I had great results. So I became a distributor of these products. Um, I joined the business. I actually run my own recruitment business and it died in the lockdown. So I got involved in this business. Um, two years on, I absolutely love it. And all I do is recommend these products to ladies that are struggling like I was. Um, and so anybody can join this business, anybody that gets on the products that wants to go on and recommend it through your friends and family or, you know, however you want to do it offline or online. Um, and you can earn, um, you know, a nice extra income, you know, from that. So I've made lots of new friends, you know, talk, networked with lots of new people. Um, and the team community is fabulous as well. So if it's something that you're interested in, then go back to the person that invited you on the call and, um, you know, they can discuss that further with you. So um, I think really then it, it's whether anybody has got any questions for either myself, for Julie or for Claire, um, then, you know, please feel free to ask away. We've got 10 minutes, by the way. I've got a question for Claire, if you don't mind. Claire, um, just in relation to your HRT and the migraine side effects, what yeah. HRT are you taking? I can't think of the, the name. name. Of yeah, I can't think of the name of it. But it would be estrogen, progesterone combined because of your yeah. surgical menopause. Yeah. 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 So it's your progesterone dose that needs looking at. Okay. So I, I would go back to your doctors because you shouldn't yeah. be suffering like that. Um, and yes, I agree. So what happened with you with your surgical menopause is you literally dropped off the estrogen cliff because yeah. removing everything. So when when you go when you when you're in menopause or, or in that transition, the ovaries basically stop producing eggs. So forgive me if I'm teaching my granny to suck eggs but you know unless you I think unless unless you don't sort of research these types of things then we don't necessarily know what's happening in the body so we're literally running out of production of eggs which is the estrogen is telling the, the ovary to produce the eggs but the ovaries only can make I forget how many it is it's a ridiculous amount sounds like a never-ending amount but they do eventually run out of, of of eggs and then basically dry up and become nothing so the estrogen's no longer required because there's no eggs left for the estrogen to get the ovary to produce or release so when you go into surgical menopause depending on what stage you were at and you presumably were having some horrendous symptoms for them to do the, the level yeah. of surgery that they did because sometimes they will try and leave one ovary or leave your uterus or you know so that you don't literally hit that brick wall which is what happened to you and so because that decline was so rapid you've literally gone from one day to having the estrogen to the next day to not but we still produce estrogen in weaker forms and in other areas of the body so the adrenals are the main gland that take over the production of estrogen in terms of estradiol, which is the most potent form, which is 
and there's a different form that you produce in pregnancy which is much weaker and then it's another form I think it's estrone that you produce in menopause so it's a but it's a much weaker form so if you're under chronic stress then it's the adrenal glands that also produce the cortisol which is the stress hormone which is the survival hormone so your body is always going to prioritize producing cortisol over any other hormone because the body's main purpose is to survive just to get you through every day and survive so if you are under chronic stress then that in itself forget about the dietary side that in itself can be causing a hormone imbalance if if you're at sort of a very late stage of entering into menopause post-menopause and just to confirm for you if you don't if you're not aware so perimenopause is the period leading up to menopause menopause is literally one day and that's the 12 months where you haven't had a period so a 12 12 months from the date of your last period if you haven't had a period within 12 months then you are clusters in menopause and then 12 months after that date um it's your clusters post-menopause and as i said you, you're post-menopause then for the rest of your life so that the stress can really play havoc with any hormone imbalances so you could have the best diet in the world but if your stress isn't under control then that isn't going to that isn't going to help with any hormone imbalances and particularly when because the adrenals are the main production of estrogen the other area that is um very metabolically active in producing estrogen is we we tend to so we said about the estrogen giving us that body shape to reproduce as that estrogen declines we lose that shape we lose our waist we go a bit more sort of carry weight more around the middle and that that's just because the estrogen levels drop in and the body's there being told to deposit that weight so that that fat somewhere different but if you are carrying a lot of weight around the tummy then that can also produce a weak form of estrogen um, so we've also got estrogen receptors in the brain we've got them in the in the around the tummy area and then the adrenal glands also produce it so um, I just sort of wanted to give you a bit more background as to what's happening in the body and, and the reason why you have that experience. But it, it will definitely be your progesterone levels that okay. are causing those migraines. So I would ask your doctor to review your prescription on that. Um, Morag, you asked a question. If you can't speak to a doctor, is it best to just add phytoestrogens <laughs> for the best? It's <laughs> worth a try. Yeah. All I would say on that is if you've got any family history of estrogen driven cancers, so breast cancer, or even if yourself has, has had estrogen driven cancers, so that's breast cancer, cervical cancer, and um, bowel cancer are all estrogen driven cancers, as is prostate cancer, but that's obviously in men. Then you just need to be careful with your phytoestrogens because what you wouldn't want to do is increase the estrogens in your body and in, then increase your risk of cancer. Well, that's interesting isn't it yeah thank you very much for that okay. um so we've got literally got two minutes left ladies so if has anybody got any other questions um anybody <laughs> <laughs> um do you want me to pop my email address in the chat and then if anybody does want to if, if you think of something yeah. afterwards or yeah of course you're and not actually, happy to and, ask in a group environment then and julie's um yeah. in my menopause group as well so julie got yeah. so if anybody wanted to talk to julie direct then they can make contact with her through that as well um so yeah or if anybody can't find julie message me and i will put you in touch with her <laughs> yeah that's great Zoe. Um, so if anybody's Sometimes you're just not comfortable in a group situation to talk about your personal yeah. situation. So I don't mind. I'd happily have a, a chat with anybody, just a free, no obligation chat about your situation to try and give you some free advice to help you. Lovely. Oh, that's great. Well, thank you ever so much, Julie and Claire, for our coming thank on the call and me. talking. Um, it's been a very interesting chat. Um, so I think we're probably... Um, say farewell now because we literally have got just over a minute left um i don't think there's any more questions so um yeah that's great well thank you ever so much ladies for hopping on on this very hot night 
um, and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you so much.